Hello and good day to you. Everybody in the NN hates installing versions that end with zero. Well, my name is Bogdan, I am the owner of the NN Sharp, and today I want to announce the release of Action Grid 1.1. That I hope uh, it will change that for some folks, and uh, one excuse less to try this amazing tool. It is a major release, we've added some very impressive features and the purpose of the, vi the video is to show you just that. Um, so let's just jump straight into the action. We have some very big features and a lot of small features. I will not go through anything. I just want to impress you. <clears throat> so I'll start with a new video, with a new action grid. So, if you are not already familiar, um, Action Grid lets you connect to da data sources like the database or write your own SQL query, pull the data, and display it into this nice grid with search capabilities and filtering and so on. So, what we are going to do in this demo, I'm just going to connect to a uh, table. And I will choose the pages table, it's called tabs from DNN. I will choose which one is the ID column because each entry needs to be ident uniquely identified. And I will leave it like this for now. Next, I get to choose which columns I want to display in the grid. So let's say that I want the top ID and let's say that I want the title, top name, maybe some description, and let's say the portal ID. Okay. Add selected. So now I have this grid and I can also order the columns in which way they want, I want them to appear. And this so far is nothing new. I'll just save and uh, go back and show you what I have so far. It's a grid where I can uh, select uh, entries, do bulk, delete on them like we used to do in version one or do some searches. But now I will show you the capabilities that come with version 1.1. And the first thing that I can do is I can change the layout. So I'm not forced to have this grid layout anymore. I can go into template and choose to listing view. And in the listing view, I will see multiple columns and I get to specify for each device how many columns I want to see. So let's say on the mobile I want one, on tablets maybe two, on desktop three, and on large screen four. So now when I go back, you see I no longer have the grid layout, now I have some nice boxes. But the first thing that you notice is that the ID got in here on the first column. And of course, I don't want here, here I would like the top name. Now, what Action Grid does, it takes the first column and uses it a title. So just by inversing these two columns, I should be able to get the title in the title bar, okay? But let's say that I want to display the top uh, name and also the top ID. And this is a new feature we have added, it's very, very handy. It's called Add Computed Field. And here you can you get to use tokens that you're familiar from maybe other of our modules and reference the fields from the database and even call my tokens and uh, other stuff. So it's very powerful to build any, any kind of information that you want into these uh, computed columns. So let's say that I want, uh, I said that I would like the tab name and then in, in, in round parentheses, I will put the tab ID. Okay. And I will move I will move this uh, at the at the top. Okay. Save. So you see now I have the title that uses two tokens. And the rest of the information is inside. The next thing that I will do 
is I want to add some buttons. So let's say that I want to, to view each of this page when I click a button. So there we've added, this is another big piece that we've added into Action Grid 1.1, and that is the ability to add your own buttons. And there are two kinds of buttons. There are grid buttons that are, uh, can be displayed at the bottom or at the top. And this, uh, for example, you would use to create um, either a button like add, add page, let's say, and this we would uh, uh, configure to redirect to the add new page form. And you can do this using actions. And this is the same uh, engine that we use in other of our modules. So you, are, you can add different type of action, like you can add a, um, a redirect to a URL or to a portal page, or you can do a send an email, or you can uh, run a SQL query, all, all the stuff that you can do with um, action form and other modules, you can also do in this actions field. So this is how you'd, you'd use grid buttons. And then you get to specify each button. Actually, that was the ID. Uh, you get to specify if it appears bottom, if, if it appears top, and you get to specify an alignment, and you get to specify the style, and then you get to specify an icon. Let's say I would use a plus, okay? So let me save this and show you what I have so far. So you see I have this button, at, uh, this button at the bottom that I would click and take me to and execute the actions that I define in that button. I didn't find any actions, so I don't expect this to do anything now. Okay. This is one category of buttons. So you, you can actually build uh, also bulk actions button using the same strategy, the grid buttons. Let's say you want to build a um, button that sends an, S an SMS for each item in the list that you select. Uh, let's say... Uh, uh, send reminders. Okay. And then you'll notice there is another list of actions at the bottom that is executed for each action. And inside each action, you can reference the fields. For example, if I were to send an uh, email, let's say, I can reference the fields using the token syntax. So tab name would refer to the name of the current tab because these actions will get executed for each tab in my list. And this um, will get in the context will get the value of the currently uh, iterated tab. Okay, so this is very powerful for building uh, bulk actions. So in version one, we only had the delete button that you'd select multiple entries, click delete and delete all of them. Now you can do the same, select multiple entries, click a button and do anything that you want. Send them on email, post them to a web service, delete them from the database, whatever you think, whatever your requirement is, you can do it using these actions or also extend it to your own actions. Uh, this framework lets you write your own .NET assemblies and hook them into uh, this architecture. So they will appear in this list automatically and you can select them and execute your own code and implement your own logic. So this is one kind of buttons. And the other kind of button is the item button. This appears next to each item. In the grid view, they would appear on the uh, right hand side of the grid. But in this list view that I'm using now, they would appear be below each item. So let me show you. Let's say that I want to build a view button. And then maybe I would not use the, I, I, I have the ability to not use the title, only use an icon. So let's say that I want to, <coughs> use some icon. So now what I have, you see, there is a button next to each um, item in the list. When I click this button again, I will get to execute a list of action that I defined in here. So for example, let's say that I want to view this page. Well, um, how could I do this? I could, uh, for example, redirect to a URL. 
and use a token that um, is my token that is called navigate URL and this just expects us to give it a tab ID so I'll just give this tab ID which in the context when I execute an item action all this token refer to the fields of the current item so tab ID is the ID of the item that I click okay. so let's save this and see how it works so let's say that I want to go to the schedule page, just click it. And next thing, I'm on the schedule page. Okay. And again, I, I get the same capabilities that I had in version 1.1, so that I could search. For example, let's say that I want to go to the grid page, which is this page that I'm editing now. So you see, I just write and it filters it as I type. See? Very nice, very smooth, very fast. So far we haven't tested the responsive capabilities, so here it is. See, I resize the browser, so now I'm on three columns. And then I resize, I get to the tablet size, they will go two columns. And as I resize, they will go um, one column and so on. So this is the responsive capabilities that are built right into the list, list template. And before I go to the next topic, I should mention that this template engine is actually configurable. So you can build your own templates and hook them in uh, in the configuration. And we actually have on our roadmap to implement, for example, a template that uh, displays a, as a calendar. So you can build, for example, a scheduling application. How cool would that be? So that concludes the this feature on the new templating engine. The next thing uh, that I want to show you is, uh, I promised this some, to some guy on our forums, that I will show the new export to CSV capabilities. So what I will do is I would use one of these um, grid buttons. Let's say this one, I would just say it's uh, export. Okay. And when I click it, I will uh, download all items as CSV. So in the actions, I would just say serialization, serialize to CSV. And you'll see there are a lot of options here. The good part is that you can just leave all empty and just store a new URL to the generated XSL file. So what this action will do is uh, generate this Excel file somewhere on the disk and give you the, the URL or the file path or whatever you need. For, and there are different strategies. For example, if you want to send it on, a, on email, you need the file path because the email uh, needs to read the file from disk and so on. But if you need to redirect to it, the file path, the physical file path is useless. You need the URL. And in, 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 in this example, I can just uh, redirect to that file. So I will just store the absolute or the relative URL. Again, this could be that you want to email the link and if you want to email the link that you need to use the absolute URL. But if you want to redirect, you can use the relative URL. So it depends on the context, how you use the action, which one of this one you, you'd use, but you can also use all of them. In this case, I would just call this URL and then add another action. And I would say redirect to URL. And this, what will do, will create a token for me in the context and store the URL there. So then I can just put this token here and it will pull the value that was stored by the action before. So that, that this is the beauty of our action ar uh, architecture, that you, you have this context where you can pull data from various sources. You can, the form fields go in there, the uh, grid fields go in there. And then you can also pull data with actions like I did now. Uh, for example, you can run a SQL query, pull data in there, and then use it again and again with other actions. So enough talking. I hope I didn't get you bored with so much talking. And let's see how this actually works. So I'm now exporting it. And it redirects to it, but because the browser doesn't know to view this file, it just prompted me for download. And I can open it. And we can take a quick look of what's inside. So here we have just what we expected of the data that was in our grid. And it's important thing to know that if you filter the dropdown, then it will only pull the data that is under current selection. So if you search by something and then download, it will only give you the search results. 
So it's a, it's a very uh, flexible component action. So that's mostly it. There are dozens of small other small features, but before I conclude, I only want to show one of them, and that is we've made the integration with Action Form smoother. In that, they, it will communicate uh, with uh, Action Grid using pop-ups and reload the grid without reloading the page. So now, if you're using the Action Form data source, it only works with Action Form data source. You would get this uh, very nice integration, and I will show you this in a bit. And the form doesn't have to live on the same page. Now I have added here for um, for testing purposes, but, but maybe I, I could just delete it, delete it and use one of the other forms that I have on this site. So you can see that it doesn't have to be on the same page. You can put the form on a different page and then have the grid on a, a different page. And then just by setting the data source to that form, you will get this smooth integration. So let me uh, delete all of these fields because they are residual from the previous data source. And I will add the new fields. Okay, not very intuitive fields, but they will do the job. Okay, let's go back. Oh, and one thing, when you use this action from data source, in, and as a matter of fact, for any data source, it's better to use this special button. So instead of using a view or a add button that you do yourself, unless you have some custom logic, it's better to use the provided buttons. For example, the delete, the edit, the view. Why? Because some data sources actually implement these buttons in a special way, like we did in Action Form. So just by saying that I want a delete button and, a, and an edit button, I get these two buttons that are wired and everything, and I don't have to do anything. Just click them, and I'm up and running. And same for the um, grid buttons. I can add a new entry button that will add a new record, and a bulk delete that will just delete uh, everything that I have selected. So this is just some clicks, and I have the basic form that is a uh, grid that is wired to the form with editing capabilities and so on. So you see now I, I'm connecting to that action form, if I click that button, you see I have a pop-up. And now uh, it actually doesn't look, look as nice because I'm in edit mode, but if I would go in view mode, click add, you see, very nice. And then I get to add new entries. Okay, this also had an action. If it didn't have an action, it would uh, actually be loaded here. It will actually communicate with uh, Action Grid to reload the grid, but because it has a custom action, it assumes that uh, something it needs to do, to do something special. So this is it. Um, I'm sorry for the long video. I had so much stuff to show today, and I hope I got uh, to convince the people that didn't try before to try it, and the ones that tried to upgrade and enjoy this new release. Thanks for your time. Bye.